St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Ottawa for deceased family and friends and in thanksgiving for the televised Mass. The second is an anonymous donor from King Kirkland, Ontario. The third is an anonymous donor from St. Agnes Parish in Waterloo, Ontario for the living and deceased members of her family, for the return of her grandchildren to the faith and for our Holy Father. Our thanks to our donors for this gift of the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care. O Lord, we pray that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A birth into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord.
He provides food for those who fear Him. He is ever mindful of His covenant. He has shown His people the power of His works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The Lord will remember His covenant forever. He sent redemption to His people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. His praise endures forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus Christ was rich, but he became poor to make you rich out of his poverty. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your mother and father. The man said to Jesus, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, the man was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Today's Gospel story is a very familiar one. Awed by Jesus' presence, a rich young man impetuously kneels before him and asks him what he needs to do to gain eternal life. But his enthusiasm proved short-lived because even though he loved Jesus and Jesus loved him, he could not commit himself because of his great possessions. Most of us can see ourselves in that young man. I know that I have also knelt before Jesus and have failed to commit totally everything to him. Many of us would agree that money, the lack of it as well as the abundance of it,
can make it very difficult to follow Jesus. But it is not as simple as that. Even if we do not have great wealth or expensive possessions like this young man, we still hold on to things that keep us from committing ourselves totally. Wealth is not the only thing that can keep us from following Christ. There are other things that we are unwilling to let go of, things that end up possessing us. The first one is self-indulgence. How many times have you knelt before Jesus and prayed, just one more time, Lord, one more affair, one more drink, one more shady deal, one more house, one more car, just one more time for me to have it my own way. Then, Jesus, I'm yours. The second thing that can take possession of our lives is control. When I get my life in order, when I get even with those who have hurt me and I'm no longer angry, upset, or defensive, when my business affairs are running smoothly and profitably, when my children are self-sufficient and happy, when my life is finally completely safe and under my control, then, Jesus, I'm yours. The third thing that can possess us is self-centeredness. I want to get everything I can out of this life, so my existence, my gifts, my worth, my well-being comes before anyone and anything else. Something deep in our psyches prom prompt us to believe and act like we are privileged persons. We expect everything to be organized around our needs and our wants. We believe our talents are the only ones worth recognizing. So when I get everything that is owed to me, when I receive what I feel I deserve, then, Jesus, I will follow you. When Jesus tells that young man to give up all that he has, he is confronting us with life's most basic question. Will your life continue to be self-centered, or will you free yourself and give your life to God? We can try to hold on to our possessions. We can try to control this life, hoping that there is another way that will allow us to continue to pursue our selfish interests and still say we are disciples of Jesus. But as the rich young man found out, when we come face to face with Christ, we must make a choice, either to put God at the center of life or ourselves. So don't think that Jesus is just attacking the rich and us poor people are off the hook. This gospel passage is not aimed only at the rich. When Christ calls us, we are called not only to question how attached we are to what we own or how much money is in the bank, we are also asked to look at all the presumptions and attitudes that we possess, the things that make us the center of life. When we experience the presence of Jesus in our life and he overwhelms us with the beauty of his person, we can't help but fall down on our knees and ask, what can we do to serve him? Anytime we encounter Jesus, there will be great sacrifices that must be made. But we will also receive many hidden rewards. Which of these we experience, we will only know when we take the risk and do whatever we have to do to follow him. My dear brothers and sisters, when we live according to our own will, life becomes a battleground where we must always win if we are to feel justified. To be in control, we must exercise some kind of power over the world around us, or our life will be judged a failure. But when we follow Christ, the deepest needs of our spirit are justified, and there is no longer any need to fight, nor must we live by the world's standards in order to feel powerful. If we choose Christ, we become strong, even in our weaknesses. With Christ, we always win. So, self-centered or God-centered? This gospel presents the heart of the choice we have to make. Is it me or is it Jesus? The decision we make 
becomes the basis of our faith. If we are Jesus-centered, then we can let go of all this bargaining and stop trying to be in control. When we center our lives around Jesus and his gospel, we can move on. We have already won the true prize of life, and it doesn't matter whether in the eyes of the world we are winners or losers, rich or poor. Jesus is the only one who can truly tell us what we are worth. Let us now join our prayers together in thankful praise to God for the continuing gifts of grace and strength. That we may have the faith to follow the gospel and to trust that God will act to bring all things to his glory, we pray to the Lord. Glory to God. That God will be our guide and our strength as we try and live according to Christ's teachings, we pray to the Lord. Glory to God that firmly rooted in prayer, we will find positive ways to serve God and our neighbor, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that a spirit of thankfulness and joy may be manifest in the lives of those in our television community, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that we may work hard to be good witnesses of faith for others so that they may come to encounter Jesus in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty Father, thank you for the simple gifts of life. Help us to see that what we really need for happiness here on earth and to help others to find their way to eternal happiness is you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit to the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands and the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this holy church. May your people's oblations, O Lord, find favor with you. We pray that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Benedict our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer to the Holy Spirit? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. O God, on the first Pentecost, you instructed the hearts of those who believed in you by the light of the Holy Spirit. Under the inspiration of the same Spirit, give us a taste for what is right and true and a continuing sense of his presence and power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks to three donors, the first an anonymous donor from Ottawa, the second an anonymous donor from King Kirkland, Ontario, and the third an anonymous donor from St. Agnes Parish in Waterloo, Ontario. It's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television. And you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation.